Welcome to lesson 1.2, Transformations of Linear and Absolute Value Functions. In the last lesson, we looked at horizontal and vertical shifting and reflecting over a line, specifically the x-axis and the y-axis. In this lesson, we're going to take a look at stretches and shrinks. So you can pause the video now and you can read all the stuff that's over here on the right-hand side of the screen. But for now, I want to explain to you what a horizontal stretch or shrink is going to look like. What that's like me doing is that's like me taking like a push pin and, and pinning down the point that is on the y-axis. And then what I'm going to do is I actually like take the two ends and I pull them um, horizontally, right? So I'm going to pull them horizontally. And what that means is it's, it, it's like I'm going to take it and pull this way, and I'm going to pull this way. Well, as you can imagine, what's going to happen? If I'm pinning down that spot here, my line is going to go like that, right? So I'm going to pull away, and my line is going to become a much steeper line. Or I could actually pull it in. I could push it in towards towards the y-axis. And if I do that, again, you can imagine what's going to happen. It's going to look like that. It's going to get become a, a, a much steeper line as opposed to a more gradual line like the blue line is. So when does this happen? Well, the green line's created when all my a values are greater than zero. Now, it's important to note that I am talking about a factor of 1 over a, and that will come into play later on. For now, I want you to think of it as a greater than 1. So what about the slope? When the slope is 3, when it's 4, when it's 5, that would give me a line that would have a rise and a run, right? Your rise would be 3, 4, 5 units, and your run would only be 1. So that would create a very steep line. The blue line is created when a is between 0 and 1. Now, 0, because anything less than 0 will give you the negative numbers, and we're not worried about negatives. That's what a reflection would do. So anything between 0 and 1 would give us a more gradual line. So think of slopes like 1 half and 1 third, right? We'd rise 1, but we would run 2, 3, 4 units. So that's what we would get with the blue line. But we don't have to just push and pull things towards the y-axis. We can also push and pull things towards the x-axis. So when we do that, what we end up doing is we end up kind of, instead of pinning the y-intercept, we kind of pin things at the x-intercept. And we can push things down towards the x-axis. And again, when we do that, what happens? What do I get? I end up with a line that is much more gradual. Right? Or, or again, we could, we could push it up. We could pull it away from the x-axis. And when we do that, what do we do? We get a line that would look like this. Right? So we get something that's much steeper than what we were started with. And again, this steeper line will happen when a is greater than 1, and this more gradual line will happen when a is between 1 and 0. So let's take a look to see how these work algebraically. So directions, let f of x equal the absolute value of x minus 3 minus 5. And we're to write a rule for function g, whose graph is a horizontal shrink of the graph of f by a factor of 1 third. And a function h, whose graph is a vertical stretch of the graph of f by a factor of 2. Let's just look at part a for now. So we know that we want to do a horizontal shrink of the graph by a factor of 1 third. Now, you have to remember this right here. If you noticed back on that horizontal stretch and shrink, this tells me the value for A, and the value for A is equal to 3. It is the reciprocal when we're talking about horizontal stretches and shrinks. So if this was like 3 fourths, then the A value would be 4 thirds. It's important to remember that when we're dealing with specifically a horizontal stretch or shrink. It will not be like that when we're talking about a vertical one. So make a note of that to yourself, that you make sure you do that correctly. So g of x is equal to um, the rule with horizontal stretching and shrinks says that it's f of ax. So whatever the value for a is, we just replace it in there. So that's what I'm going to do in my next step here. I'm going to replace the value of a with 3 because that's what the value for a is in this particular problem. And now it's just using function notation and rewriting f of x, and instead of using x, we're going to replace every x with a 3x. So let's see here. It's the absolute value of 
not x anymore, 3x minus 3 minus 5. That's all there is to it. You can keep it just like this. This is, in fact, the answer, and that will do just fine. Uh, so no, no worries there. There is some more algebraic manipulation that you could do, kind of like what we talked about with transformations before in the last section, where you could actually take the 3 and factor it out if you wanted to, and take the absolute value of 3 and then stick it out front, and end up with just a different version of the same answer, 3 times the absolute value of x minus 1 minus 5, but you know what? I'm not going to worry about that. This answer will be sufficient. And here you can see the graph of the two functions. So the red graph is f of x, the one we started with, and the blue line is, of course, g of x, what we just found. And you'll see that this has, in fact, if you look, we've anchored the y-intercept, and we've taken my function, we've taken f, and we've pushed everything towards that y-axis. We've taken the two ends, and we've almost folded it together a little bit more, and we have this much steeper line for g of x. So that's part A. Let's take a look at part B. For part B, we were supposed to write a function h of x, who's a vertical stretch by a factor of 2. Okay, so if I remember what that means, that means that h of x is equal to, if I write it in the right format, a times f of x. And again, that's the rule of the vertical stretch that I had back a couple slides ago. So h of x is equal to a times f of x. In this particular equation, what is the value for a? Well, that's very straightforward. With vertical stretches, it's just going to be 2. So this right here tells me that a is equal to 2. So I'll replace that in my equation. So 2 times f of x. Okay, so then what do I have to do? All I have to do is I have to replace my f of x with that big function, the absolute value of x minus 3 minus 5. And I just have to remember to distribute my 2 to both of those values. So my final answer, 2 absolute value of x minus 3 minus 10. So again, as you can see here, f of x, the red graph, is the one we started with. And in this problem, g of x is the green graph, the one we just found, that h of x value. That should be an h of x down there. And what happened? Well, if you look, we've taken this red graph and we've started to pull it. We've pulled f of x away from the x-axis. And when we did that, what did we end up with? We ended up with a graph that looks like g of x. Again, we're pulling the graph, the red graph, away from the x-axis.